Hi, everyone. Good afternoon. Um, thank you for joining us, joining our webinar today. Five easy ways to connect your documents and people for company wide efficiency. My name is Nicole Schmeida. I'm the Senior Marketing Specialist here at DocuAir. And throughout today's session, I have a couple poll questions for you, and I will moderate the Q&A at the end of today's session. Today's main presenter is Nate Rowles, Regional Sales Director here at DocuAir. He has over 10 years of experience equipping, equipping companies of all sizes with document management and workflow solutions. So it's great that we have him on the line today. For today's agenda, um, you know, we have three main sections. For the first part, Nate will go over, you know, how DocuWare can help you connect your content and people. Why, you know, why DocuWare over perhaps some basic file, share, file sharing solutions you're using now. And then he'll go right into a live demo so you can experience it in action. Get a first look and feel for DocuWare. And then at the end, we'll go into Q&A. Before I pass it off today, I do have one poll question for everyone on the line because we want to get a feel for, you know, what is everyone doing now? How are you working? So if you just take a second to um, open up your screen, focus your screen here, I'm going to launch the question now. So you should see it. Um, what drives your business processes now? Uh, maybe you're still using paper processes, um, paper document storage or file share solutions, but maybe your processes are still driven manually. Uh, another option is maybe you're already using centralized document management solution and you already have automated workflows, that's cool too, and you're, you're here to check out what DocuWare can offer you. Or if you have another um, comment, feel free to put that in the question or chat box. So I'll just wait till we get a good amount of votes in. I see them coming in now and then I'm, I'll share the results so everyone can see, you know, how, how everyone else is working today. So let's get that going. Get a good amount here. All right, looks like we have enough votes. I'm gonna close and share the results. So Nate, uh, did you wanna kind of comment on the results we're seeing here? Reasonably interesting, I think. A little bit lower percentage than if I had to venture a guess as, as to paper storage. We do, believe it or not, still see a decent amount of that, although close to one out of five isn't too far off. And it does seem like a lot of you have started a digital transformation or somewhere down the path already in that process or have started using some kind of tools, which is interesting. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, that's good that a uh, majority, you know, you're you're headed in the right direction, but you still need that, you know, automation piece and other features to make sure you guys have full connectivity throughout your company. So with that now, I am going to actually pass it now to Nate. Well, I presume that transition works smoothly. We are a technology company. So today, ladies and gentlemen, I mean, technology has just become an ever increasing part of, you know, overall what we do to do business and make the business successful. In fact, in the last three years or so, we've seen even more changes, maybe even an uptick or acceleration in those of you, which was kind of reflected in the poll, um, and those of you that have already started adopting or trying to move down a path of more digital, more paperless environment. And we've seen this come in a couple of different flavors. You know, the, the Z drive or the folders that we share on the server um, is something that's been around for a lot of years that a number of folks have started using. In recent years, uh, we see more of the file sharing transitioning to a, a cloud-based service like a Google Drive, a Dropbox, or a OneDrive. Uh, certainly in the last couple of years that that tackled the immediate or the obvious problem of remote access to all of my content and my documents. And almost all of us, if we look at individual departments within our organization or even company wide, we have some kind of software package that runs that part or all of the business, an HRIS system or a payroll package for the HR folks. We have perhaps CRM in our sales department maybe accounting software, accounting package for our finance folks. 
And most, if not all of these, have some kind of documents tab or some kind of attach button where I can upload PDFs as well. And so we've seen that come in a couple of different flavors. And some of you may be sitting there thinking, hey, we better get some good information this afternoon um, because we're already doing something. We already have a solution in place. What would be different about DocuWare or about a true content management solution? Well, unfortunately, I have some bad news for most of us using file sharing services, software within our departments to attach files. It's not that those are bad ideas. It's a great starting point. But it's an inadequate comparison to make that between a file sharing system and a document management solution. What we've learned over 30 plus years is you're just missing some stuff. Sometimes automated retention schedules, building in document deletion or document purging for things that get too old or, or, or are insignificant to the business anymore. Managing access rights uh, within the files or can edit or change the files. This might even be things like electronic signatures or maybe a web-based form to collect some information at a starting point where we don't even really wanna create a piece of paper or a fillable PDF kind of in the first place. If we look at it a little bit more advanced, there's a whole set of workflow tools or task automation capabilities within a document uh, management solution. These could be things like, I don't know, a permission to purchase an item or routing documents through steps of a process. We could spend a whole entire session just on this topic, um, but certainly is additional value and capability beyond those core requirements that really make it all work smoothly um, to enhance the overall outcome for your organizations. If you kind of sum it all up, we want to connect all the data to your existing applications and provide a standard central repository that's secure for paper files, Word and Excel spreadsheets, emails, really any records that are relevant to your business in any format, shape, size, style that they come in. And we're scalable. If you look beyond an initial implementation area, we have found use cases in almost every department of any organization, whether it's record keeping uh, in a controlling or, or a financial planning environment, uh, proposals and quotes for salespeople, contract expirations, even just, again, a permission to make a purchase. So what we tried to do today was pick out the four or five areas that might be the most universally relevant or useful to all of you in comparing file storage, attaching files to my accounting package, or whatever you've started doing now down the path of your digital transformation. These are the things that we think might provide the biggest difference today versus the future. I already mentioned some workflows and routing documents through um, different departments, different people for access when they need to see them. We'll show you some examples of that in just a minute. These departmental software packages, like your QuickBooks in accounting or your CRM in the sales department, these are pretty important software packages. Those They support the main functions of those departments, and they have a lot of data and information in them that people need to make their decisions. So we'd also like to give you a, an example of how the content and the documents can be kind of linked. The retrieval of that can be linked into those programs that I use every day. And you can kind of have our cake and eat it too. It makes business sense to have that stuff there. We'll also give you some ideas on uh, transparency and visibility into those workflow processes. It's nice that we can automate some steps, but there's always a need to keep an eye on what's going on. And from a compliance or re regulatory standpoint, take a small peek at audit trails and audit logs to track anything and everything that would ever happen to a document in your environment. We'll also look a little bit about security and managing the access rights for individual files for individual groups or uh, departments within your organization and a little bit at automating some document retention steps. And we're fully aware that a lot of this has to be done from not within the office environment from some type of mobile application out in the world or just not at my desk. By the way, before we take a look at anything, I do wanna mention we can deploy this type of solution in whatever environment you prefer. You can host it locally on your network or on your servers or make use of the Microsoft Azure Cloud as a packaged solution with a DocuWare Cloud offering.
so at this point, I'd like to give you a three or four different examples along the lines of some of those topics. But before I start, Nicole, are there any questions we should address? Uh, let's see. Looks like yeah. Let's take a pause here before we before you go into the introductory demo. We do have one question. It's about comparing DocuWare versus OneNote, but perhaps that would be best answered as you're going through the demo or during the Q and A. Ah, oh, that's a really good question. Maybe we should have included it in our list of of, of some of the examples. Let me. I, I I do agree with you. Let me get some ideas out there for folks to consider. Um, I have run into customers using OneNote as, you know, a place to collect some notes and some information and, of course, upload some files as part of part of that notebook or that tab. Um, and it may even be a conversation we can have offline with you as far as a direct compare contrast. Um, but generally speaking, to at least address the question a little bit, the the capture of information, how it gets into the system and, and especially how we can search and find for it later is probably going to be a little bit more flexible, a little bit more user-friendly than OneNote, um, not to mention some of these other examples you'll see in a moment. So, any other questions, Nicole? Oh, nope, you're good to go. So, what you see on the screen here, hopefully, is a Docker cloud system. And I'd like to start with some of the more advanced capabilities as far as some difference, examples of differences. And then we'll move along the lines into some of those core functionalities that we mentioned, like document retention and access rates. So we're going to start with some automation to tasks and business processes within your organizations. And we're going to look at two totally different examples there. The first one starts with a web-based electronic form. This is oftentimes a data collection point or the initial step to get some information together for a process. And sometimes it needs documents and sometimes it doesn't. These forms in DocuWare are available through a link. In other words, you can make this available to anyone inside or outside of the company as you deem necessary, uh, post it on your website, share it through an email or whatever methods to access the information. And when I open this link, it'll simply load a form. What we're gonna do here is look at an example of a construction contract. And I guess, we could probably do it for perhaps a character that we're all familiar with in today's world named Donald. So the first thing we're gonna do here is go in and do a search in all the files that are in the system now by whatever criteria, criteria we want to find that information. But since our example is gonna involve Donald, we'll go ahead and pull up any files and see that there isn't anything here right now for Donald. When I go ahead and open this form, you'll see it's for our local hardware store. This is the family owned business that's been in town for 75 years and recently during COVID decided they would expand into the home remodel, home renovation business since they were so well known around town. So, of course, we have to fill out some basic information here. But I am going to put my email address in so that we can kind of see how the experience goes both inside the business. Uh, on your end, running your organizations, and for our new customer, Donald Duck, who is going to put an outhouse on the back corner of his property. Don't know why that's the choice, but he lives, of course, here in the great state of Pennsylvania. And maybe we want this outhouse to have a ladies and men's room, please. So it's going to be a duel. When I submit this form, you'll see something happen immediately in the DocuWare system. So we collected some information. But what we want to do here is execute a contract with Donald to actually build that outhouse. If I refresh the search here, you'll now see. Well, if I submit the form here, ah, we're going to look in our contracts digital filing cabinet. And if I pull this up, what you'll see here is actually two items. The first is simply that web form that we originally submitted collecting the information. 
but we don't want a form from this. What we actually want is a contract or a document to sign to build an outhouse. If I open up this new file, what happened inside the Docuer workflow, one example of the automation, is we collected the data and then we merged it to an actual document that we would expect our customer, Donald Duck, at some point to sign if he wants to proceed with the project. And in fact, we made this as a Word document. Well, why do we do that? This is a pretty standard contract and a lot of times it wouldn't get changed or edited, but if we wanna edit that information, then we certainly would expect to be able to open it somehow in perhaps the Word app on my computer, or if you have Office Online, directly in another browser tab. So for the occasional need to change, edit, or type in this document, we created a Word document. And at the same time that this Word document was assembled, a task has been created for me inside the office. This form could be filled out perhaps by a salesperson in the field at Donald Duck's house. But the first step of signing the contract is for someone like myself, maybe on sales support, to review this contract and make absolutely sure it doesn't need any kind of legal review. There isn't anything odd or unusual here that would cause us to have to negotiate any special terms. We simply want to send that now for signature. So while the sales rep is still sitting at Donald Duck's house, I can confirm this. Notice my email, since I don't have access to Donald Duck's email, is populated here. And I'll simply confirm that that document is ready for signature. Now, if you do a lot of these, you might be sitting there thinking, well, how do I keep track of all this stuff? Right now we make a spreadsheet or we jot some notes down, or we have a special box in our Outlook that we move everything into, a special folder to keep track of things. Well, what you'll see here is we have some lists for that. And we have lists for all kinds of different things that you might need to keep an eye on as it moves through a process. We could be watching for contracts that expire in 30 or in 60 or in 90 days, or we could be watching for documents that we've shipped out for signature and we don't have a response yet on. Here you see again, Hicks hardware contract and the fact a visible audit trail that says I've submitted it for signature. Now, if we look at Donald Duck's email, what you'll see has happened in my email is that DocuSign has accepted a transfer of that document directly from DocuWare and is now asking me to sign my construction contract. So we'll go ahead and do that, of course, as Donald Duck. And we've now accepted our new outhouse project. Meanwhile, back inside of DocuWare, as soon as DocuSign completes the verification of the signature process, you'll see that our documents that are waiting for signature are no longer waiting. In fact, this item, the moment it gets updated by the system with a signature, will drop off of this list. If we want to see the end result of that, we can go back to that same document that we searched for, and you'll see that it's no longer a Word document. If I refresh my search, you'll see that this has become a clipped packet of information. And in fact, in this example, we have the signed construction contract on top with Donald Duck's signature right here. We've included an audit trail provided by DocuSign. This is the security log of everything hap that happened to sign that document, verifying it's a true valid legal signature. And then last but not least, we have in this uh, example, we've chosen to retain the original unsigned Word document. So I realize if you, if you folks do contracts with your customers, that's probably not the end of the process. We probably need to move this through some additional steps for people to set up for billing and begin the project and order materials and all things like that. But I'd like to switch over to a totally different example at this point. Let's take a look at invoices, specifically vendor invoices, bills that we have to pay. Those don't typically start as the creation of a document and the routing out for signature. Those typically start because an envelope hits the door and we open it up and inside's a piece of paper that's an invoice, or more commonly these days, I get an attachment in my email. So what you'll see here is I have two different bills in my email, one from a third party shipping company called Rapid Transport, and one from one of our biggest suppliers or vendors that we buy a ton of steel from each year. So the first step in this process is to import these files into DocuWare. 
which we would do from Outlook by simply clicking a Docular button to bring those two files in. They arrive in a little holding tank or inbox in Docuware dedicated for incoming invoices. And when we go to move these items into the actual archive or the document storage, I mentioned very early in this discussion the ability to automate some stuff, specifically the capture or the input of new documents. And what you see happening here is that Docuware has automatically identified and classified every piece of criteria we would ever need, whether it's dates, whether it's order numbers, vendor names, so that we can search for this document at any point in the future. We don't use folders and file names to actually organize how you have to go or can go find the information later. You can search by any of these fields, which if you notice have also been completely identified for US Steel, and I store those two documents away in a matter of seconds. So in the case of a contract, the, the business process is acquiring a new customer. We'd like to sell our product or service to a new customer. And the contract is kind of a supporting document. It, it, it needs created, it needs reviewed. Once it finally gets signed, a bunch of stuff happens, but it really supports that process of acquiring a new customer. In this example, the invoices really trigger the process. Until the vendor bills us, we, there really isn't a whole lot for us to do. In fact, they have to ship us product and send us a bill before we would really take any action. So for those items, we go in here and we see what happens. DocuWare is monitoring uh, incoming files for anything invoice related. And when it gets there, we're actually looking at the contents of the invoice and trying to determine what to do, make some kind of automated decision on those invoices. Basically what ends up happening is we put things in one of two buckets, either a bucket where there is potentially some problems, or a bucket that is pre-approved for payment, and maybe there isn't any issues that need review on the invoice. So here you see I have a tag called validation, and I'm being asked to check the details of an invoice. If we take a look at this one, it's the rapid transport invoice. Why did it get flagged as a potential problem? Well, if we look down here, we get some indication as to why. One of the business rules, one of the automated decisions in the system is to look at the invoice and determine if there is a related PO or any other information about this transaction. And in this case, there wasn't. There was no purchase order, or perhaps there was a purchase order that didn't uh, match. It didn't have the same amount as what we're looking at for the invoice. And so this got flagged as a potential problem and diverted to me in the finance department to apply some human intelligence to this. And when I see this, I realize this is a third party shipper. This is who my warehouse manager uses when there's an emergency. We have to get product on a truck out the door tomorrow and we don't have any trucks available. So in that kind of circumstance, I know there's almost never gonna be a purchase order. Um, it's a last minute thing that we have to rush to get done. So I'm not gonna reject the invoice. I'm not gonna ask for any corrections. I'm simply gonna allow that to proceed through the process. Once I confirm that, you see a new tab here called voucher or book and pay this item. You'll see here it's ready for completion or payment processing at this point. And this is the US Steel invoice. This particular decision by DocuWare was there are no problems and we think we can pre-approve this for payment. It's ready for completion. Why did that happen? That actually happened for the exact opposite reason as rapid transport this transaction or this invoice does have a purchase order. It does have a shipping dock that indicates we received some goods. And if you look at the amounts, the invoice and the purchase order have the same dollar amount. If you don't trust the computer or would like to double check that yourself, you can get to everything else related to this transaction in two clicks and see that we have the invoice from US Steel, the shipping document or bill of lading or packing slip, and the purchase order, which is indeed the same million dollars as the invoice. And this transaction, of course, makes sense to go ahead and process for payment. Now let's go back to that rapid transport invoice. Previously, it showed up for a validation check, but I was asked to check the details. The reason why it's still here in finance is very simple. If I don't have a PO, 
I probably need to route this document to somewhere to tell me whether it's okay to pay or not. So in this particular example, we will send this document to our warehouse manager. I mentioned him earlier and now we'll find out Mr. Brian Ford. So in this case, I'm simply routing the invoice out to Brian to get a payment authorization since I have no other way to make that decision. So Brian runs our warehouse. He runs our uh, production plant. He's in charge of shipping receiving. Obviously, he does a lot of stuff for us. The one thing that Brian absolutely never does is sit, as, sit at his desk. So as he's out and about in the warehouse, in the plant, checking on things, he gets a ping on his phone from this Doctorware app right here. When he opens it up, as you can see at the top, I am actually Brian at the moment. When he opens it up, you'll see that he has a new task to review inside his mobile device. It is in fact called a requester approval for an invoice. And when I tap there, you can of course see a copy of the document. And of course, a long list of documents if Brian hasn't been too diligent in completing his tasks and has a bunch of invoices to review. I can open it up and see it and even see the visible audit trail that's put on the document by all the previous decisions like Nate in finance who overrode the absence of a purchase order and routed this thing out for review. And then Brian has a set of decisions he can make. These are configurable. It may be in your environment with your business processes, not a simple yes, no. There may be more decisions that need to be made here, more information that needs collected. But in this case, I'm just gonna go ahead and approve the invoice for in fact, the entire $483. And when I confirm this, you'll see of course the task disappears. We move on to the next thing. You can also search from this app or upload new documents to the system, full functionality as you'd expect. So, if we return inside the DocuWare uh, web client world and we look at our tasks back for Nate in finance, you'll see that I now have ready for completion in the pre-approved for payment, my US deal invoice that was auto-approved because of the matching of the PO and the rapid transport invoice that Brian has approved and the amount that he's approved. Hopefully those two very different examples give you some idea of the process and workflow automation capabilities that would be stretched far beyond a simple file storage or departmental software package. Again, very good tools for what they do, but perhaps missing some stuff as you grow and evolve over time and more and more content goes into these type of archives. Now I'd like to show some more basic examples. We had mentioned earlier, you know, these departmental packages like your CRM, or your accounting software in the finance department, people do a lot of work in those. Those programs exist for a really good reason in your business. So in this example, we're gonna look at QuickBooks as a finance package. And I'd like to share a few teasers on some more basic functionality, but things we still consider very, very important for a seamless digital transform, uh, transition. Um, let's stick with the vendor invoice example. So we'll go into expenses in QuickBooks. And here in QuickBooks, I have a list of, now I only have one item on the list, but a list of all the open transactions, right? These are the things that I've purchased and haven't received bills for yet. And so if I'm in a particular purchase order, like this screen here, this is in fact this PO, and I'm looking at some data about the PO, maybe items I purchased or what the costs were, this is the most logical place inside perhaps QuickBooks where I might wanna see the rest of the documents. Notice up here on the screen, there's a big blank area in QuickBooks that we can kind of make use of uh, in DocuWare. What you'll see here is an embedded search or linking the retrieval of the, the related documents to the software that I'm already comfortable in, I'm already doing all of my rest of my research in and trying to figure out what the answer to the question is at hand. Notice here now we have a DocuWare search button inside of QuickBooks. And in fact, it is designed to look for any and all documents related to this exact transaction. So when I click this search, what you'll see happen is a list of information open up on the screen. It is in fact, 
the invoice from U.S. Steel, the purchase order originally issued to U.S. Steel, and of course, the delivery documents, but they are all for this particular transaction because that's what I'm accessing in QuickBooks at the moment that I click that button. One other topic I'd like to touch on is an audit trail. This is helpful to your organization if you have to support any compliance or regulatory requirements, um, any certifications, things along, things along those lines. So let's go ahead and go and do a search in here for that rapid transport invoice that we have been looking at a little bit. If I right click on this file, you'll see a history tab. And it's divided of two, it's divided or compromised of two separate components. Everything related to workflow that happened on this document, any automated decisions or human decisions that occurred during problem checks, assignment for approval, or payment processing. But in addition to that, we log every little detail about what happened on the document, not just workflow decisions. So here is every time the document was touched in any fashion, starting with 2.23 Eastern time, when I stored the document into the system. Then some information was updated, then we opened it a few times, then we made a note on the document, then some more uh, information was updated, then we opened it. If you wanna see in any of these examples what has changed, or if you need to prove to an auditor what actually occurred at that point, we can see that the status changed from the detailed processing started to a requester approval status, and the requester changed from no one to the Brian Ford warehouse manager that we assigned that invoice to for approval. So at this point, we've looked at an electronic form that collects information, creates a Word document, and routes it out for digital signature as one workflow example. We've looked at invoices that come in that need reviewed compared to purchase documents compared to shipping documents may be routed for approval and we've been able to sometimes decide and sometimes not decide whether something is already ready for payment processing and we looked at some audit trails some logs to support all of the compliance or regulatory requirements you might be dealing with there are one or two last things i'd like to share one is on uh, security and access rates for that, we're gonna actually look at an HR example. And we're gonna start at the highest level possible with Mr. Simon Stone, who is the director of my HR department. So if we log in as Simon, and uh, this example, by the way, is entirely based around searching. There are extensive access rate controls in DocuWare, not just for searching, storing new documents, editing information about documents, whether you're able to download things out of the system, everything has a control point. But for Simon, who's in charge of HR, if we go in and do a search, you'll see Simon has access to HR records in a lot of different flavors, a lot of different ways to search. Maybe open job positions that have been posted. Maybe we wanna look at all resumes. Maybe we wanna see all the employee files for everything. But if you notice, there's nothing unrelated to HR here. Everything here is a, a part of the HR archive. In other words, Simon has no access to sales contracts with customers or financial documents or anything like that. In fact, can't even see that they exist. So if we go in here to the employee full records search and we do a blank search, we'll get everything back in the system that Simon has access to. In fact, that is 351 files of all different types and kinds, benefits enrollments, payroll authorizations, I-9s, check caching forms, on and on and on. If we look for perhaps just for resumes of potential new hires, and again, do a blank search, we will see only resumes or job applications in the system. And that is actually 19 of the roughly 350 files that Simon has access to. So this is a filtered search because of something specific I'm looking for, and this is access to everything in HR. So let's move down a level. Let's look at one of the department managers within HR. Let's look at what Elizabeth has access to. Maybe she's in charge of the legal department. If you remember those contracts for construction that sometimes needed a little bit of 
uh, adjustment to some of the legal terms. Maybe Elizabeth runs that department with some support staff. So Elizabeth, when she goes into search, has access to, of course, the sales contracts. Elizabeth also has access to search all the old projects, all the old properties that we've already done rehab projects on. That information might be useful when reviewing a new contract. And as a department manager, she has access to a couple of different sections within the HR file cabinet. For example, the same resumes and same broad employee search that Simon Stone has access to. However, if we go in and search resumes, what you'll see happen here is Elizabeth does not have access to any of those 19 resumes. The reason why that occurred is simple. This is a convenience mechanism. Elizabeth doesn't care about resumes unless they're for the legal department. She's not interested at all in someone applying for an IT position or a finance position or anything else in the organization because she only hires for her department. In fact, if we go in here and search the employee files as a whole, what you would expect to happen is that Elizabeth might have access to some of her own information, which she, she certainly does. Anything involved in her original onboarding, like a W-4, is available to her. She also has access to a couple of new hire requisitions that were performed in the past. These are uh, forms and processes to replace employees that maybe quit. And she has access to this Peggy Jenkins for some reason, but she doesn't have Peggy's W-4 or I-9 or hiring paperwork. She has Peggy's performance management or annual appraisal because Peggy works for Elizabeth and is a direct report in the legal department. And if we take that down one level further to good old Peggy, some of you may be expecting what to see here. Peggy, working in the legal department, supporting Elizabeth negotiating contracts, has access to contracts, has access to all the old properties worked on, has access to no resumes whatsoever in any fashion, whether they're for her department or otherwise, and only has access within the employee records themselves to her own onboarding documents. So I hope that proves out some idea or shows some concept of the granularity of the controls that can be put in place here. And if it's one central repository for the entire organization, it's very easy for your IT team to manage that. Last but not least, I would like to take a look at document retention. So let's go back here to these invoices. We're gonna do a new search and we're gonna try and find, maybe, maybe for this, we just care about invoices for this example. But of course, we probably want really old ones. So we're gonna try and find old invoices in the system maybe things before December of 2020. And I do have some stuff. In fact, if you click here, I can actually sort and get all the old ones on top. So we have a few from 2020, a few from 2019, and then a few that are really old from back in 2016. Now, document retention is a process that normally runs in the background. And as files reach a certain age or a certain status or whatever criteria you give us, for what the business rules are, we can purge or automatically delete those. Mine is turned off because otherwise those 2016 files, if you talk to finance people, are more than seven years old and they can go away. We don't need them anymore. So I'm gonna go ahead and activate my deletion process. And if we flip back over here fast enough, we might see what happens. What's the benefit of this? I don't know many organizations that actually go through the basement, dig out all the boxes every January and figure out which ones can be shredded. It happens, but it just never quite happens on a schedule or as frequently as we would like. And I imagine going to the OneDrive or the QuickBooks attachments or the file share on the server. Now we have to click through all those folders and find all the 2015, 2016 stuff and delete it. So this eliminates all of that. You have to do nothing expect, except spend perhaps 30 minutes describing or laying out the rules that need to be possible in DocuWare. And you'll see as I refresh this search, all of our 2016, but none of our newer files have been purged from the system. So we looked at two different workflows. We looked at a search integration into another software program. We looked at audit logs and history. We looked at security and access controls and 
automatic retention schedules. So I think I've given you more than enough to think about, hopefully, at this point. And I think I should turn things back over to Nicole. All right, Nate, thanks so much. Thanks for that great uh, first look demo. It was, you know, you covered a lot of features, but I really liked how you showed how it touched different points um, throughout a company um, from, you know, finance, HR, people out in the field, not necessarily like in their, um, you know, desk all the time. So that was really cool to see. So with that, let me get my um, slides here. I do have a poll question for you all. Um, and then we will wrap it up with uh, Q&A. So let me get this going here. All right, so um, on your screen now, you should see a question. What document, what document benefits are you most excited for now? Um, saving time, increasing productivity, using the digital workflows, anywhere, anytime, document access, uh, security, you know, secure document storage. You don't have to wonder like, oh, is so-and-so accessing my documents when they really shouldn't be? Or any other comments, feel free to type them in the question or chat box. So uh, you can choose more than one. So we'll get uh, an idea of what everyone's liking, what they want more information on before we wrap up. All right, looks like we got a good amount of votes in. So I'm going to close it and share the results here. So it looks like everyone, you know, liked what they saw based on this feedback here. Um, Nate, did you have any comments on these results? I do find it interesting, although I guess after 10 or 12 years of doing this, it, 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 it does resonate with me, but I do find it interesting that it looks like we have a very even distribution. In other words, businesses are still specific in their needs and what problems they're trying to solve and what they're trying to accomplish. Um, there, to me, isn't really a huge outlier there that stands out that says this this one little part of DocuWare is important to everyone. It does seem like folks have a lot of different needs across a lot of different areas, which, which is really why we feel we bring, you know, a lot to the table um, for this type of solution. Right, yeah, definitely. So as Nate mentioned earlier, you know, DocuWare has been doing this for 30 plus years. We have over 15,000 customers using DocuWare day in and day out. So we hope that we can do the same for you as well. So just wrap up here. So you saw the introductory demo, but you know, don't take our word for it. We have a customer case study in your handout section. And I really like what Don Unger, president of Advantage Credit Reporting Services had to say. So this is a credit reporting um, service. And what they were able to do was, you know, accelerate their productivity and also imp improve employee retention. Uh, he says, you know, by, by enabling flexible work schedules due to the mobility of DocuWare, he's been able to retain his, retain his experienced staff, grow their business without adding, you know, extra personnel and, you know, be set to grow into the future, you know, all things to getting the right digital tools in place. So definitely read the full case study when you get a chance. And this is just a fun little thing I wanted to share before we open up for Q&A because, you know, we're talking about tools, technology, but, you know, at the end of the day, we're all people and, you know, there's it's always a good reminder to take breaks and, you know, hopefully with DocuWare, you know, saving time down the road, uh, you can schedule more you know, mindful breaks throughout your day. And we hope that lunch isn't the only time that you're stepping away from your desk. If you're working on a project or after you complete a project, consider taking a five minute break afterwards, stretch, kind of refocus before you jump into your next one. Or if you're working on a problem and you're having difficulty, consider taking a five minute walk too, just to, you know, see different perspectives. It's been shown that walking definitely can help with problem solving. So I just wanted to end on that, you know, nice uh, personal touch there uh, after seeing, you know, DocuWare and all it can do. And before, you know, if you only remember one thing from today, just remember that DocuWare lets you and your team work smarter than any, you know, basic file sharing solution that you may have currently. 
So let's continue the conversation. Uh, reach out to your authorized DACA partner. You should have received a webinar invitation email from them. So definitely feel free to reply to that or use their contact information at the bottom of that, those invitation emails. You can request a personalized demo at docuer.com slash demo or email us anytime at contact.us at and we'll put you in touch with the right person to get your questions answered.